Hey guys, I got some boxes to open. Two are fish and one is a package from Cobalt. I want a, um, a, a giveaway, I think, over Christmas. And um, one of the, or the prize I won was either like a tiny little tank with like a filter and stuff or a $100 gift card. Well, I chose the gift card because obviously I can make more use of that. So I ordered, um, well, we'll see what I ordered, but pretty excited. Of course, I'm going to save the fish for last. So we're going to open the cobalt order first. If I can do this. these days I'm gonna get a box cutter okay so I got tons of food these are goldfish pellets um, not the best ingredients lots of wheat and stuff like that but um, you know me I like variety so more goldfish pellets. The goldfish are getting big, especially cheekies, and they go through a lot of pellets. Then I got brine shrimp pellets. I've had these before, and the fish love them. They're great for the wilds. They're not very um, small, so it's hard to feed them to smaller bettas unless you kind of, like, grind them up. Um... But they're good for the wilds, and the fry will take bites off of them like I do my other stick foods. So, really like this stuff. Then I got brine shrimp flakes. Um, I feed a lot of flakes to my live bears, my guppies. I feed them to... Um, sometimes to my fry, not often, like maybe a couple times a week, I'll feed them to my bed of fry, but, um, mostly I feed them to my live bears, but I got brine shrimp flakes, so I could mix those into my other flakes. I got these discus pellets, um, that are supposedly, were supposedly formulated, um, with help from discus han. And the reason I got these is because they have pretty high protein and fat. So this is going to be a good food for conditioning fish. And we'll see if it's um, big enough or, or small enough to feed the fry. Not. Oh my gosh, I need to have more coffee. Um, we'll see if it's small enough to feed the bettas to condition them. But um, with the high fat, it's going to be really good for growing fry too. So... Um, got that one. These are breeder pellets. Again, high protein and f and fat. So, good for conditioning fish. So, those are co both kind of the same, but slightly different. I got, um, the Discus Han. Discus Han's, um, flakes. They're the same as the um, pellets I just showed you. Then I got two. Um, I got two of these uh, fry minis. I'm thinking, I don't know if I can open this up one handed. No, I'm thinking they're probably going to be too big for little fry, but um, they look like a good size for like juveniles and even my adult bettas will eat this and again these have a lot of protein and a lot of fat which I like for um, conditioning my fish so I got two of those and then I got a nice 75 watt heater because you know who doesn't need extra heaters so that's from Cobalt. Now we'll get to the fun part and open up the fish. But I just appreciate Cobalt for doing that little giveaway. I don't ever win those kind of things. Um, 
So I was really surprised when I won, and I thought it was awesome that they offered a gift card instead of a tank, because I really did not need a little tiny tank that I couldn't do anything with, so. All right, now on to the fish. Okay, so now we'll move on to the fish. As I've been saying, I'm getting um, two boxes of fish. Um, one is gonna be some rubra. See if I can get this open one-handed. All right, I give up. I'm gonna pause it. Okay, this was a beast to get open, and it's in this like cannon, um, this like round styrofoam. So I thought that was really funny. But I had to pull all that out. There was no way I was gonna get open one-handed. So these are the rubra. And they're little, so they're not going to have a lot of color to them. So there's one, two, three. That one looks like a male. Four. This one's definitely a male. And five little rubras. So I'm going to put these guys back because wilds tend to get really stressed out. So these will go downstairs. I've shown you I already got their tank all set up. So now we'll move on to the big box which has one fish in it. much easier to open. Oh, and they got me with the inner tape. Okay. This is the fish that's going in the tank upstairs that I um, have been setting up the last couple days. I did a video yesterday. Uh, I went and got more plants and stuff, and I was going to put out a video of it, but I, as I was uploading it, I just noticed that it was, like, really horrible. Like, it was shaky, and I was obviously not paying attention to where the camera was focusing. So, um, I just decided not to, um, not to post that. So, but I'll show you the tank and the plants and stuff in a minute. So, full of this newspaper insulation. And I'm going to reach in. Packed up in a, in this, um, crowd, what do you call it? Bubble wrap? It's like insulated bubble wrap. Alright, I don't want to poke the bag, so I'm going to pause it again and open this up. Okay, here we go. I'm so excited. Let me preface this by saying, um, I really want to thank my friend Amanda. She posted a video of this fish. And I just commented saying, oh my god, he's so cute, I love him, blah, 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 you know, let me know if you breed him, I want babies. And um, she, it turns out that she was going to get rid of him because he's not, he's got some stuff going on that makes him not breeding quality. And she's like, if you want him, I'll send him to you. So, I'm super excited. I don't often get fish just to keep as pets um i really try to only buy fish that i'm gonna breed because i already have to spend a lot of money um you know with fish food and stuff like that so all right so here he is a giant and when i say giant he's giant even for a giant giant orange Dalmatian placot. Look, there he is. He's pretty grumpy. He's a little bit cold, but we'll get him warmed up. Oh my god, he's so cute. He's ginormous. 
The reason I fell in love with him so much is that the first bet, it wasn't the first bet I had, it was actually the second, but the first bet I had that really made me fall in love with bettas and, you know, want to get more and then eventually want to breed them was an orange Dalmatian like this, except he was a veil tail and not a placot and definitely not giant, but that guy's name was Fish. And the story behind that is when my first beta died, you know, immediately had to go out and get another one. I was so upset. I was like 15, I think. Um, and I had to go out and get another one like that weekend. And we went to PetSmart, of course, because, you know, I didn't know anything about buying fish online or breeders or anything at that point. I, I don't know where I thought fish came from, but you only got them from the pet store in my mind. Um, and we went to PetSmart, and there was nothing. Like, you've everyone's been to PetSmart and looked at the fish and seen, like, it's all just crap. Like, there's, like, four bettas, and they're all, like, half-dead looking. And I was so sad, and my mom's like, well, we'll just go. We'll go to a different store. You know, we'll try back next week when they get more fish. And But I was you know, stubborn, and I was determined I was going home with a fish that day. So I found this one that was kind of brownish with these brown spots on his fins and kind of ugly but looked at least healthy. And I was like, I'm taking this one home. But I don't really like him. I'm going to name him Fish. <laughs> and, you know, I took Fish home. I put him in the tank, which I'd cleaned out, obviously. And, um... I was like, every day I would look at him, I don't like you. I wish I'd gotten a prettier fish. And um, as he settled in, he turned into this gorgeous orange color. He was like pale tan before, and he turned into this gorgeous orange color like this. And his fins got those pretty orange spots. And he just turned into a, the most gorgeous fish. And he um, would come out and flare at me from his little cave every morning and... Um, Back then when I was in high school, I had piano lessons, so I was practicing piano all the time, and he would love, he loved it when I would be in my room practicing piano, and he'd come out and dance, and really made me fall in love with that, with Betas, and I took him off to college. He passed away at like four and a half years old and broke my heart, but um, that's the story of fish, and that's the story why I love, love, love orange Dalmatians. The only reason I don't breed them is because... It's hard to find good ones, and you, you almost always have to import them. And I have imported pairs in the past, and I spawned them, but um, didn't get any fry. And then I took a hiatus from breeding and got rid of those fish and stuff like that. So one day I still want to do orange Dalmatian spawns, but orange Dalmatians hold a very special place in my heart. And then this guy with his big grumpy face just fell in love with him but the reason why she couldn't or not couldn't but she didn't want to spawn him is he's developing tumors and I don't know if we're going to be able to see them there's one kind of right there that kind of brown spot on his fin right by his body um, and then there's one by his dorsal so um, she didn't want to breed him because of those tumors. So, um, you know, kudos for her for not breeding a fish with cancer, you know, um, and it's good luck for me because I got a really cute giant boy out of the deal. So I'm going to go ahead and get him floating, get these other fish floating, and then we'll take a look at his tank. Okay, so we're going to temp acclimate the rubras first, and I've probably said this before, if not, I'm sure most of you have seen it on other videos, but I don't do drip acclimation. I just float the bags in the tank, let them get acclimated to the temperature, whoops, and then I pour the dirty bag water out into a um sorry I'm having a brain fart um 
pour the dirty bag water out into a bucket and then release the fish into the tank. So we're gonna let these guys settle down. I usually float them for about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, these guys are pretty cold so I'll probably let them go uh, closer to an hour. Um, and then I'll release them and hopefully they'll be happy. I have my two other rubra in here and generally you always want to quarantine your fish separately. Like this is a very, very much a case of do as I say, not as I do. Um, I trust the person that sent me this fish 110%. I don't have any doubt in my mind. I'm taking this label off since it's no longer the platy tank. I have no doubt in my mind that these fish are 150% healthy. They were raised by her. They've never left you know her care and I am confident that they're healthy so I am gonna go ahead and mix them with my two males um, but yeah generally when you get new fish always quarantine them separately before um, mixing them with your other fish just like we've all learned with the saga of Miss Cheeky's over here because um, you never know it will pop up but Every once in a while, you can make an exception, and I'm making this exception because these guys, these guys are coming from a friend who I know has clean fish. So if we look down there, there's one of their new roommates down there in the cave. They might both be down there. Yeah, I think they're both down there in the log. Let's see if we can see them. Pretty colors. Okay, so we're gonna let those guys sit. I'm gonna take big orange guy upstairs and um, get him acclimating and show you his tank. Here he is. Just let him out, he's trying to eat the new plants. So, you'll notice I did a little rescape yesterday. I got some plants. Wasn't too much of a selection at um, Petco, but I did get a few plants. This is Limnophilia heterophylla, I think, and um, basically it's kind of like Kabomba or Hornwort. It's going to get really fluffy and um, tall but it was the only one labeled like four or mid ground that didn't look half dead so I got it I got a big Anubius I actually got two of these but I decided not to put one in the tank um, if I move the stuff out of the way um, I got a few stems of wisteria that's obviously immersed grown but hopefully it'll convert easily and I won't lose too many of it. Um, oh, I got betta bulbs. That's what these brown things are, which are basically a Pondageton species. I've had those in the past and they grew really well and um, I figured I'd try them again, see what happens. Um, this plant right here is Hygrophilia compacta. No. Agrophilia coriambosa, I think. Um, again, it's immersed grown. We'll see how it transitions. Um, I'm not sure if it's, it'll grow tall or if it's the compact high grow, but right now it's in the back. If it ends up, you know, shrinking down and being a low ground plant, I'll just move it to the front. You'll notice that there's a knee right snail in here. I'm trying to not put any quote unquote pest snails in here like ram's horns, anything that's going to breed like crazy because I don't want this tank to get infested with snails. So um, I got two zebra knee right snails. I don't know where, the, I don't know where the other one is right now, but um, 
I'm going to use them for algae and I'm going to try really hard not to introduce any pest snails into this tank just so the bio load doesn't go crazy. And then just this big guy is going to live in here with the snails. Hopefully he's nice to them. He's looking for food. I put a couple pellets down there but I think he missed them. I'll probably feed him some blood worms a little bit later. He keeps trying to eat these plants, but they're not food. So, really excited about him. He's so cute. He's a little stressed out right now, hence his weird behavior. He just came all the way from California, so... Long trip. Just got dumped into a new tank. gonna eat try to eat that dead snail there was there were snails in here before when I had it set up and obviously me drying out the substrate killed all of them so it's just empty shells but that's the reason why I don't want to introduce snails back into here because I don't want this substrate to just be full of snails so I'm gonna use the um the knee rights because they don't produce reproduce in fresh water so slowly picking out those snail shells I think I'm gonna turn the filter down a little bit I can see the plants moving really fast and that probably means that the um, currents gonna be too heavy for him so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down and uh, let him chill out I put my other light on here but I cannot find the bracket again I looked all over. I'm really hoping I didn't throw it away for some stupid reason. So I'll keep looking for it. I might have to order another one, but with both of these lights on here and CO2, this makes it a highlight tank. And I'm not sure how these plants are going to do. Um, if it's going to be too much light for them, but we'll see. If I start having an algae problem, I'll back off on the light. So, alright, I'm going to turn the camera off and um, probably go release the rubra. I'm not going to show that because it's not going to be very interesting. They're going to immediately go hide. But I'll show them maybe tomorrow or something. So I'll update a little while later on this guy after he has had a few hours to settle in. To give you an example on the size of this new boy, um, these patodi are at least four inches long in their body length. With their tail, they're probably close to five. Um, and this guy's about the same size. <laughs> So he is just humongous. You can see he's kind of chilling out now. I gave him a bunch of pellets. He's digesting them. Right now this tank is staying at 76 with no heater. My room tends to stay pretty warm because I have, you know, let's one, two, three, four, like nine tanks in here most of them are small don't get me wrong but all the tanks and the lights running and stuff my room tends to stay pretty warm so right now I'm trying him without a heater I know gas horror send the tank Nazis after me but um, we'll see if I I'll be monitoring the tank the temp morning and night and throughout the day and um, for the next week or so and if it as long as it stays stable at about 76, I'm not going to put a heater in here um, because that will prolong the life of the fish, keeping them at a slightly lower temperature. Um, you know, it slows their metabolism down. So right now, no filter for this guy. You can see I moved the, um, the outflow for the filter so it's hitting against this wall just to kind of um, uh, keep 
um, turn the current down a little bit for him. So I think he's able to get around fine. I might put the filter back the way it was, but um, for right now I just turn the filter down and let him, you know, get nice and settled in. He does tend to kind of float like this with his tail up in the air. And that could just be due to stress from shipping. Um, you know, we'll keep an eye on him. He's just a pet fish, so even if he has some quirks, that's fine. But I just think he's so cute. And he looks really good in this tank, I think. He really, like, pops. I need to, um, today, a little later, I'm going to do a water change and um, fill this tank up more. Because he's a betta and he does need access to surface air, I'll probably leave about a half inch at the top for him. But I, I can definitely fill up another half gallon or so in this tank. So, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a size reference. He's almost the same size as these guys. Just really huge. These guys are picking through pellets. So, okay. Need to get back to work. Got some crickets to try for Susie. I don't know why I've never bought them for her before. Like... You know, in the back of your mind, you know, oh, yeah, you can feed them this and that and blah, blah, blah. And then you don't think about it, like, when you're actually at the store. So I went and got crickets and then, um, sorry, red, rig red wigglers. And so we're going to try feeding her some crickets right now. I'm going to try to do it without... Um, pouring that stuff in. Oops, okay. So we got a couple in the water. Come here, Susie. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not even holding the camera up. She'll notice it. Come on, Susie. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. Oh, maybe the flash is freaking her out. Hold on. Okay, I turned the flash off. There we go. Let's see if she'll go after them. Oh, yeah. Oh, you like that, huh? Come on. Go get another one. another one. If you weren't on camera right now, you would have eaten all of those up already. Come on. Come on. Look. Well, this is anticlimactic. She got one of them. There's two more in here. Maybe she didn't like it. Come on. <laughs> this one's just like riding around on... Oh, not that one. The other one's riding around on some duckweed somewhere. Come on, Susie. Wow. This was anticlimactic. Hopefully the red wigglers will be more fun, but 
I think these guys, they're small crickets, but I think they're still a little bit too big for my patodi. But maybe we'll try feeding some of those tomorrow. I'm kind of mad at myself because I used to have supplies to keep crickets, you know, food and stuff. And once I got rid of my crested geckos, I just got rid of all that. And so now I'm going to have to feed these guys pretty quickly before they die. Let's see if she'll get that other one. She's trying to make a break for it. Nope, she's not doing it. Oh well, that was anticlimactic. Well, that's all for today. Um, oh, I guess I'll show you. I'm about to feed these guys, so might as well get it on camera. Let's see, I'm going to give them the breeder pellets, the new pellets we got. So let's see if I can open it one-handed. Now these are kind of big. I thought they were going to be smaller. So what I'm going to try to do is find a um, pepper grinder or something that I can grind these into bite-sized pieces for my um, domestic bettas. These guys can eat them. I'll give them a little bit more. Okay. All right, that's all for today. I um, also wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I just saw that we hit 500 subscribers today. It's crazy. I still don't know what you guys see in these videos, but as long as you keep liking them, I'll keep making them. The February vlog challenge is almost done, so um, thank God, because doing daily videos, even short ones, is a lot harder than it looks um, or sounds. So, be going to um, only a couple videos a week. I'm not um, setting myself any kind of schedule or anything like that yet. But um, I will be doing. Let's see if she'll get that that cricket now. Yeah, there we go. Um, I will be doing videos and, you know, maybe one day I'll set out some kind of schedule, but just wanted to say thank you for all the subscribing and comments. I love reading the comments and answering your guys' questions and, um, all that good stuff. So, hope you enjoyed new fish unboxing and plant unboxing. I'll show you an update on the rubra that arrived tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to move the guppies upstairs and do all kinds of good stuff. Oh, now, now after all that time you're eating them when I'm not paying attention to you. Real nice. Real nice. <laughs> anyway, thanks again guys and I'll check at you tomorrow.